Hey there and welcome back to Mass Effect. My name is Pete and today we complete the second and final part of the Pinnacle Station DLC. Last time in a pretty long episode we already completed 8 different combat scenarios and today we will complete 5 more although those will be a bit more advanced. After securing first place in those 8 scenarios, we have now not only put the somewhat competitive Turian Vidinos in his place, but we have also unlocked 4 more combat missions that we are now going to tackle. Do you need something else? Yes, we would like to get right back into things and continue with the next mission. Let's try a new simulation. Well, well. Your performance was just reviewed. You now have access to the last set of missions. Which combat mode? Time trial, capture, survival, or hunt? And just like last time, let's start with capture. Capture. Good choice. And for courses I have volcanic, tropical, and subterranean. As you can see, we unlock the subterranean level, so that is the one we're going to choose. Boot up the subterranean level for me. Fine. The projectors are warming up. You can start whenever. For capture mode, we will once again go with a heavy focus on biotics, and that means our squad will consist of Caden and Liara. Now, for those of you who did not watch the last episode, I highly recommend doing so, but as a quick refresher, the goal in capture mode is to simply capture points. On this level, there are three of them, and to capture them, we just need to position ourselves close. Now, on the first two levels, Volcanic and Tropical, we had about two minutes each to capture those points. This time, however, we only have one and a half minutes, so we do have a bit more pressure now, and for that reason, a well-thought-out strategy can help a lot. And that strategy will mostly consist of us clearing the way with biotic attacks, as it is much more important to not allow our enemies to also enter the capture circle than it is to actually physically harm them. For this purpose, this map here also offers a distinct advantage, and that's the fact that it is pretty spacious. Most of the time there will be a lot of open ground between us and the enemies, open ground that gives us enough time to carefully watch our enemies approach, and also enough time to plan our attacks accordingly. All in all though, if you simply focus on running from point to point, without making longer stops in between, then the 1.5 minute time limit is more than enough. It gives you 30 seconds per objective, and that is more or less the same amount of time that we had on the tropical map, where we had 2 minutes to capture 4 objectives. And here we are, and by now you should be used to this, Commander Shepard firmly in first place, and with a nice cushion ahead of Vidinos. Not half bad. So that is the third and final capture mission done with, and once again just like last time we will fast forward through these conversations, simply because it's always the same dialogue. This time though we have picked Hunt on the tropical map, which will once again be one of the more challenging missions. For a bit more firepower we will exchange Caden for Rex, while Liara can stay. Now, since we are about to face Geth, we can quickly switch everyone from Shredder to Tungsten rounds, and once the squad is prepared we can begin the assault. Now, you might remember my troubles with Hunt on the Volcanic map last time. While I didn't show them on screen, I definitely talked a lot about how difficult this mission was, and while Hunt on the Tropical map is not as hard as it was on the Volcanic map, on Insanity difficulty it can still be pretty difficult. Now, once again, as a quick reminder, our goal here is to get as many kills as possible, with every kill giving us bonus seconds to a timer that is constantly ticking down. Once the timer reaches zero or Shepard takes too much damage, the mission is over, so before that happens, we want to eliminate as many enemies as possible. And as a matter of fact, our target here is pretty ambitious. The score to beat is a whooping 50 kills, a whole 7 more than on Volcanic. Now, apart from the rather low amount of bonus time we get with the later kills, there are two other factors that make this mission pretty difficult. The first one is something that you may have noticed in the early beginning. Due to the size of the map, and also depending on which direction you take in the beginning, it can actually happen that you don't find any enemies for a long time. You do start with 25 seconds on the clock, however it did happen to me more than once that I had to spend about 15 to 20 seconds just looking for an enemy, which with the later kills giving you diminishing returns of course puts you at a huge disadvantage. I did, however, very soon discover a nice location to form kind of a kill zone, and that is right here at the bottom of the ramp. 
and I found that splitting the squad works very nicely here. Rex and Liara can cover a lot of open ground, even though Rex is more of a specialist in short range combat, while we can help out as needed, but we can also cover the back and the area on top of the ramp, where a lot of enemies also tend to spawn. That gives us the ability to rack up kills simultaneously, which especially on the hunt missions can be incredibly important. Now I did mention that there are two factors making this mission difficult, and the fact that enemies are sometimes hard to find in some areas of the map is only one of them. The other factor is one that comes into play at the later stages, and it is the amount of Geth destroyers. In the previous hunt missions we had the occasional high level enemy here and there. On this map however, a wave of high level enemies can consist of 3-4 to four destroyers simultaneously, which can quickly decimate even the most well armored squad. To add to that, the destroyers are also pretty hard to take down, they definitely do take longer to kill than the time they eventually add again. However, thanks to their pretty powerful attacks you can't just ignore them, and since they also tend to rush the crew you will have to deal with them whether you like it or not. And here you can see two destroyers rushing in at the same time. Shepard and Liara are both already at low health, so even though killing them quickly would be the preferred course of action here, we will instead settle for a few biotic attacks to disable them temporarily. You can also see that we are slowly working ourselves towards the required number of kills. Once again, 51 would secure us first place, but I think since the timer is already ticking down rapidly, we will just continue until the clock strikes zero and see how many kills we can rack up. Or we could just let the Geth kill us, but it seems like they're not particularly good at that job. So here we are, and with the grenade exploding in the background, we once again secure first place. 57 kills in total, 7 more than Vitinos had. On the bright side, Shepard, any intelligent enemy you come across will know how foolish it would be to face you. Alright, we're halfway through, two down, two more to go, so we can once again fast forward ourselves through the conversation with Ocran, and the next mission will be a time trial mission. We will go with the same squad as before, so Rex and Liara make the cut, but I found that at least on these maps where you have to move constantly, which is definitely the case for time trial missions, your squad mates tend to stay behind a bit. So while bringing some firepower definitely seems like a good idea at first, in the end you will have to do most of the killing yourself, so don't put too much thought into who you bring along. For this very specific time trial mission though a high level biotic makes sense, and I will show you why in just a moment. Once again the goal of time trial is to kill a specific number of enemies as fast as possible, in this case we have 20 enemies, and the time to beat is what looks like a rather generous 1 minute and 54 seconds. Especially near the end of the mission though, time can become a small problem, once again I will talk about that in a second. Now normally on time trial missions I would recommend not using biotic attacks at all, however on this particular map there is one group of enemies that it does make sense with, and that is the group on top of the catwalk here. Now as you can see I failed at killing them instantly, but with a high level throw that is absolutely possible and will save you a few seconds. With the catwalk cleared we now get to the final part, and that one holds a small challenge in store for us. Up until now all the enemies here were rather easily disposed of. In the final group however we have a Krogan against us. And this Krogan can severely screw up your plans if you don't manage to take him out quickly. Just like all the other enemies he can use immunity, and with Krogan also having the ability to get back up once they're killed for the first time, this single enemy alone can cost you 20 or more seconds. And if you're short on time, which especially on lower levels happens quite often, then struggling with the Krogan here is almost a guarantee to fail the mission. Now as you can see we succeeded, and that means we once again find ourselves in first place now. Commander, your ability to weigh the pros and cons of standing in the way of gunfire seems to be improving. So that's three of the four advanced combat missions done with, only one more to go and that one will be a rather harmless survival mission. Since killing is not necessarily a priority in survival mode, we will also not prioritize firepower, and instead we will go with a heavy focus on biotic crowd control and therefore with Liara and Caden. 
Then after switching everyone back to anti-synthetic tungsten rounds, we can start the mission. And our goal here is to simply stay alive for longer than 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Now as you can see right from the get-go, our enemies are a lot more dangerous than the standard Geth troopers, as we have both shock and rocket troopers against us, and there will also be the occasional destroyer later on. So that means the number of enemies that can severely damage us in just a short amount of time is significantly increased, so it's a good idea to keep your eyes open, especially for the rocket troopers and later on also for the destroyers, and if possible stay out of their lines of fire. And that brings me straight to the strategy for this map, because staying out of the line of fire is generally a good idea. That can be achieved by just running away from the enemies, since most of the time the Geth are a lot slower than your squad. To make sure they stay away, also always check your compass, which gives you a good idea where the next group of enemies will come from. Should they catch up, simply hit them with a biotic ability like Lift or Singularity, as those will allow you to immobilize even larger groups of enemies. The main danger on this map comes in the form of spontaneously appearing Geth Destroyers, since especially in the case of Liara and Caden, two rockets are enough to instantly kill them. Our level 50 Commander Shepard would likely be able to survive two hits, still if possible we don't even want to let it come that far, so always make sure to check your surroundings, and whenever you see a destroyer, take him out quickly. Now we have already pretty easily passed the first one and a half minutes, without putting ourselves in too much danger. And right here you see me do something that works quite well on this map. We discovered another group of Geth, but we did not engage. Instead I just turned Shepard around and went the opposite way. Now eventually these Geth will catch up to us, but that will take a few moments. And those few moments are exactly what we need to reach the required time limit. This is one of the advantages of this rather large but still very tight map. An advantage that a more open map, like the volcanic map for example, does not offer. Now we are just a few seconds away from putting our name in first place, and here we are with 2 minutes 21 and counting we have succeeded, which means we can now safely get ourselves killed. And just in time, the group that we just avoided arrives to hopefully take care of that. Alright, we managed to stay alive for just over 2 minutes and 33 seconds, again giving us a nice edge over Vidinos in second place. And with that, we have now successfully taken first place in all 12 combat scenarios. Well, that's all of them. You took the top spot everywhere you could. No one's even surprised anymore. Impressive work in there, Shepard. Well, thank you. Is there anything else you have in store for us? Got anything else for me to do? There's a special scenario I don't get to offer to many operatives. I want you to give it a shot. Look, kid, you've done well. But I've been through a lot worse and it wasn't a simulation. But I can make it one, if you're interested. Oh, a new scenario, so no competition from Vidinos, for example. You have something else I can try? It's a reenactment of one of my missions. We held off an ambush of Turian assault troops back during the contact war. Just me and a small squad. I haven't finished programming it yet, but it's close enough. You can try it if you like. So we would have the honor to take this combat scenario on its maiden voyage? Well, we can't really pass that opportunity up now, can we? I'd be the first one to try it? Technically. Though I did it first. In the real world. The rules are simple. Survive until you're picked up, if you can. You'll be ridiculously outnumbered. No real cover to speak of. It's the ultimate worst case scenario. Of course, it'll only be a simulation. But maybe there is still a way to kind of increase the difficulty a bit? Then up the difficulty. I don't want it easy. You got ball, Shepard. But it's still just a simulation. Even our best VIs aren't as good as the real thing. Then turn off the safeties. No safeties? Highest level of difficulty? You'll never do it. And then I'll have to explain how a Spectre died on my station. Well, if you're so convinced, then how about you put something on the line? What do you want to bet? A wager, huh? Yeah. Okay. I've got a nice little retirement place on Entice. I never go there, and I don't plan on retiring anytime soon. It's yours if you can beat it. And what are you wagering? My life. Right. So you really want the safeties off? If you die, it's getting logged as user error. I'm not losing my job over this. And just for the sake of completion, let's also ask him a bit more about this retirement place. What's this place like? 
quiet, remote. You've practically got the whole planet to yourself. I got a brochure from Exogeny, and they dropped a prefab down on Entice for me, here in the Argus Row cluster. The weather is terrible, but they tell me it's a red paradise, whatever that means. What do you say? Well, I would say you've got yourself a deal. Set it up. Talk to Ockren. I'll make sure he gets the new settings. I'd say good luck, but you'll need a lot more than that. Alright, nothing else to do really than to just hop right back in. Do you need something else? Yes, one more combat scenario, please. Let's try a new simulation. I'm here to serve. Which combat mode? Time trial, capture, survival, or hunt? Well, how about none of them? I understand Ahern set up a special simulation. For the record, I'm against turning the safeties off. I'll be fine. What about my simulator? I'll be making repairs for weeks. Yeah, but didn't you just complain earlier about not being challenged enough? This should be good. I don't say this very often, but good luck. Alright, now things really get interesting. And that might already be indicated by the fact that for the first time since the early Citadel, we are taking Ashley with us. Now we can read on screen that the Turians have captured a critical data bank, and our task is to take it back and then wait for evacuation. Before we get going though, let's spend some talent points on Ashley. We will spend 4 of those in pistols to unlock shotguns, and then we'll spend 12 more to max out the shotgun skill. Since we will also frequently use the first aid skill in the next few minutes, we can quickly max that out as well. Then we can upgrade Ashley's damage output with a few more points in assault training, and then we have one more point to spare, and it doesn't really matter where that goes, so let's just put it in assault rifles. Up next, we need to prepare some more by equipping ourselves, and first things first, Shredder rounds for Shepard. Ashley will then get a Spectre Master Gear shotgun with the appropriate upgrades, and I think she can also get a bit more protection. With Rex, we will just simply switch to Sledgehammer rounds, and now, let's roll. Alright, first task, eliminate the Turians around the vehicle. This is fairly simple and straightforward, there are only 6 of them and they are the weaker squad. Rather annoyingly though, they have access to sabotage, which means at some point in this fight you're pretty much guaranteed to overheat your primary weapon. If that happens, simply switch to another one, in my case the sniper worked just as well. Now what you want to do next is wait for your weapon to cool down and also for your health and shields to regenerate. This is of critical importance because otherwise the mission could go downhill very fast. Once you're ready, grab the data and then begin the wait for evac. And one very good spot to do that is on this small elevated platform, which is actually right where we entered. There is a turret here and the turret is on our side, so let's activate it, we will desperately need it. And now we just have to hold out for 5 whole minutes. This special combat scenario is pretty much a 5 minute survival mission, however not only with the time limit increased, but also with way more enemies. In this scenario there will be a constant stream of Turian mercenaries rushing our position, occasionally backed up by rocket wielding anti-tank units. In short, staying alive for 5 whole minutes on this mission, especially on insanity difficulty, can be quite a nightmare. Now since we asked Ahern to up the difficulty, the safeties are off, that means Shepard can die here, so we need to be extra careful. So therefore, one of the first things we should try to do in this mission is reduce the stream of enemies. And there is actually a way to do that, although it will only help slightly, and that way is to shut that gate behind us here, then wait for it to open again, and when it does, then immediately shut it again. That will keep the gate closed permanently, and in the process we get rid of a very annoying group of anti-tank units that constantly respawns. With the gate closed, we can now return to our squad, who for the moment are doing quite well for themselves. And let's actually talk a bit more about that squad, specifically about the addition of Ashley. Now, I admit it is quite the luxury to have Ashley on hand, ready to be spec'd out specifically for this one mission. However, by doing so, we put ourselves in a very nice position to actually survive. Next to Rex and Garrus, Ashley is probably the only other squad mate who can work as a pure damage dealer, and contrary to Garrus, she can also actually take a bit of punishment. On top of that, a high level shotgun in the right hands is a one shot kill weapon on this mission, which is one of the reasons why I invested all those points in Ashley's shotgun skill. Ashley, Rex and of course Shepard combined are very much able to hold this position for a long time, and contrary to other survival missions, moving around is not really an option on this map. So therefore, our number one priority is to just hold tight and make sure no one dies. Our squad will be severely outnumbered for the entire duration of this mission, and so pretty much everyone will constantly take damage. 
So our main challenge quickly becomes managing the health and shields of our squad mates, since immunity, shield boost and in Rex's case also barrier are not constantly available. The same of course also goes for first aid, so it's really important to always make use of everything you have available in order to stay alive. Speaking of staying alive, that turret behind us, of course that turret does not do damage to our squad. Even though it oftentimes hits very close to our squad members, there is no friendly fire in effect, which means we can safely let it continue to bombard between our lines and we will be fine. Bombardment is another good point to talk about, however, as roughly about halfway through the mission an increased number of mercenary anti-tank units will spawn. For the first half of the mission, those anti-tank units will only spawn if we don't shut the door that we closed earlier. For the second half of the mission, however, they will spawn in between the normal mercenaries. And this is also the point where things start to get a bit more heated, since a hit from these anti-tank units will of course do a lot more damage, not only to the squad member it hits, but also to others around them. That is why I personally use the tactical HUD every few seconds to look through the enemies, and if I see an anti-tank unit I will focus all my fire on that one. They will likely still get a shot off, but doing it that way almost always guarantees it stays at that one shot. Now with only one and a half minutes left on the clock, I want to say this. While all of this on screen looks relatively manageable, an insane amount of micromanagement went into this. I think I attempted this mission about five or six times before getting it right the first time, and what you see right now is the version with all the tactical HUD appearances added it out. Especially in that second half of the mission, I used the tactical HUD pretty much every three to five seconds, just to check for enemies and have a look at my squad's health. And in terms of health, I think it really pays off to have Ashley and Rex along. Both of them not only have large health pools, but also health regeneration, and while squadmates like Garrus and Caden would probably have died multiple times by now, Ashley and Rex are both still standing strong. Now I have to say this is definitely not a squad I would use on a normal mission, but the two of them are actually perfect for just this one combat scenario. Now to get back to the mission at hand, things are getting increasingly more difficult. We now have snipers coming in, we were also just hit by a sabotage, and the number of enemies that will spawn in the next few seconds will drastically increase. And with our squad slowly but visibly getting blown to pieces, it is time to prepare for the tactical retreat. Because as with all missions, it's actually not that important whether or not Ashley and Rex survive. The only person who counts is Shepard, and so while the majority of enemies is still focusing on Rex and Ashley, let's get out of here and try to survive the remaining 20 seconds on our own. We have pretty much no abilities left at this point, but I'm banking on the fact that our enemies are still occupied with our squad mates, and even if only a small group decides to switch targets, they will hopefully take long enough, which hopefully then allows us to just barely escape. And I hope that when I tell you that I actually screamed at my screen in relief at this point that you can understand that. This was probably the most challenging mission I have played so far in this playthrough, and I can honestly say I'm glad we have it behind us. I never thought I'd see the day. Good work, Shepard. Really good work. Yeah, it was certainly entertaining. It was a great challenge. Thanks for setting it up. Makes me wish we had you during the first contact war. Could have saved a lot of human lives. And since I'm a man of my word, my retirement home is yours. Too bad. Now that I've seen you beat that scenario, I almost feel like I could retire. Well, since you promised us your retirement home, I hope you're not too serious about that. Are you serious? Hell no. The day I retire is the day I die. Enjoy that place, Shepard. You earned it. And just to prove the point that Shepard has gone completely mental, let's ask for more scenarios. Are there any more special scenarios? Nothing new yet, but feel free to come back and run through the old ones. It's a good way to keep yourself sharp, and the recruits will get a kick out of watching the famous Commander Shepard run through the tests. Well, we definitely got a kick out of it ourselves. It's been a pleasure working with you, Admiral. Likewise. Call me Ahern. You've earned that too. Alright, and with that we earn the Undisputed achievement, the last one of three achievements for the Pinnacle Station DLC, and I think for today let's make the cut here. We have pretty much completed the DLC now, next time we will of course visit our newly acquired retirement home, and then we will continue with the playthrough as usual. Until then, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.